Hello, everyone. My name is Natasha Preville, and I'm the Managing Director and the Founder of the Ascension Agency. This is a short presentation about who I was, who I am now, and what I'm still hoping to be. Everything in life is a journey, and this presentation will go through a little bit about mine. However, you will have an opportunity at a later date to discuss with me further details. So here we go. So this is me many, many years ago. Uh, quite a young me and considerably younger than some of you at the moment. I didn't have any secondary shots, so to speak, but there I am quite proud um, towards the latter ages of primary school. And there indeed is my school, a uh, picture of it on the top left-hand side. I'm from South London. I still live in South London, just a bit more out in the burbs. Um, I've always remained in South London. That was my school there. I love to juggle and entertain, as you can see in this image here. I was actually part of um, one of my first in innings into television in a a short uh, little program called Hokey Cokey on the BBC and there you can see me there doing my best juggling shot. That was probably a first intro to TV coming to think of it now uh, in my spare time. I love to read and play outside and that's the image of a young girl there reading um, and being outside obviously and I love to dance ballet. Mum took me along to ballet and tap which I really really enjoyed. Um, I did two exams. One, I think I got a pass plus and one I got commended. Uh, but then after that, I think you really had to train and be pro. And that wasn't where I was heading as a ballet dancer. However, I love to still dance. And even though it might not be ballet, I can still shake my toe a bit to the latest tunes. Uh, and then fast forward a little bit uh, on now. And here we are. This is me, uh, a much more recent shot, uh, slightly touched up, of course. And I'm proud to say I now run two businesses, one of which, as I mentioned, is the Ascension Agency. The other is the Profil Consultancy. Uh, this is one of our spaces at work here, one of our studio spaces in International House in the centre of Brixton. Uh, that's where I spend a lot of my time in the day. Everything in there can get put away and that turns into a fully functioning studio which is really really versatile and handy yes and this is something that I love to do but obviously due to corona and uh, the way we've been living lately that hasn't happened so I can't wait to get back but I love 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 to travel and relax while I'm away um, I know we're all looking forward to getting to travel, even if it's just to another part of the country. Um, but yeah, I always believe travel is really important and it broadens the mind. And an interesting fact about me, Tim Peake called us from space. When I used to work at a company called Interfilm, we ran a film competition and Tim Peake was on his um, Principia mission, I do believe. And he always had a, you know, kept his Sundays free. And he loves film so much and loves engaging with young people. He said he would, you know, judge our competition from the space. From I was going to say from the moon, but that wasn't quite right. He will be judging the competition from space. Now, what another interesting fact is space can call you. So he can make a call to Earth, but Earth can't make a call to space. I never got to find out why. I'm sure there's a reason, but maybe you might want to look it up and find out. But yeah, as you can imagine, we were thrilled when that call came through. Can you imagine from space? Anyway, that was one of the greatest things that I have actually done and shared with um, work colleagues. So there you go. So what do I do? What actually do I do? So what does our business do? Well, I think the middle icon is quite important. You can see that I do a lot of speaking. So I do a lot of speaking events, um, be it through something like this, it might be going into a school as an enterprise advisor, advising young people about different careers they can take up, particularly in the creative industries. I also run workshops, I run programs, I'm a consultant, 
and do lots and lots of other things with my uh, presenting skills, so to speak. So we can talk about that a little later. But generally speaking, from this slide, you can see a light bulb here, and that signifies ideas. We are idea creators. Um, we like to educate, we like to share our knowledge, we like to share our experiences, we like to provide immersive experiences for young people to learn about the creative industries and how they can get into it. And we like to do practical uh, sessions as well. So you see someone there with a camera. So we take you out and about so you can actually you know, engage in some wonderful creative expression. Good for everyone, even if you're not interested in getting into the creative industries. So what we actually do, however, is we think, make and create. So we think about programme ideas for young people to reach their best potential. And that's across the whole gambit. So we'd look at things to do with, you know, your growth mindset. We would look at self-image. We look at positive you know, conversations that we have with ourselves and really, really important self-care. No matter what age you are, you can start. And the earlier you start and understand it and understand how good it is for you, then it becomes more of a practice as you get older. It's not something that's nice to do. It's something that we all have to do, and particularly following on from COVID. Once we do get over this particular situation we're going through it's really really important to think about ourselves and and prioritize our mental health our emotional health our physical health and our social health and that's to do with our friendships and our relationships with others generally but going back to this slide we think we do a lot of thinking a lot of thinking and that's really about different ideas and different ways in which we can really add value to young people and as well as have reveal opportunities where you get to go behind the scenes or you might get involved in some creative expression or you might just you know have a mentor from somebody in our team have a mentoring experience we make we make content we do that through making videos through making promos through making documentaries that was my past essentially um i have a background in tv and that's why you've got an image here of um of the bbc i worked at the bbc for many many years as a um group production manager and uh i basically made everything you saw on TV, on all the promotions for BBC Two, BBC Four, UK TV, Eden, UK TV, Yesterday, Watch, Channels, um, and all those promos that went out there between 2007 and 2015. So yeah, I had huge teams, very exciting and fantastic experiences. So that's what I'm geared towards. It's, it, it's more akin to a job that a producer would do. So I also worked on private jobs with regards to me being an executive producer and a producer as well. So the difference really between an executive producer and a producer is a producer would be about all the runnings of the whole production from the budgets to the schedules to choosing who comes on board to you know making sure that you have all the pre-production put together all the things needed for the shoot all the post-production work done and ensuring that the content gets delivered um, so that was quite challenging work but really really rewarding and I got to work with some fantastic fantastic people so in our make lane here we basically make opportunities for creative expression that's really accessible to everyone. Accessibility is really important. Uh, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. So unless someone shows you, you can then have a better understanding of what that's about. We very, very, very much believe in the see it, be it principle. And if people can't see it or touch it or feel it, then they can't experience it or they can't imagine it or can't were still see themselves in those positions. So we make sure we enable learning experiences relevant to the creative industries. And that could be absolutely anything through photography, through filmmaking, through mobile filmmaking. It can be through podcasts. It can be through blogs. It can be through work goes up on a YouTube channel. It could be looking at a client brief. It could be t-shirt printing. It can be 
hat design, it can be fashion, you name it. And that's one of the wonderful things about the creative industries. It's so transferable. The skills that you need within the creative industries are skills you'd have anywhere else. You know, the creative industries in itself, if you look at it like a bit of an ecosystem or a world in its on its own, any, you know, if you wanted to be a lawyer, that would be important in the creative industries. If you wanted to be an accountant, important in the creative industries. If you wanted to work, you know, within the... Um, art department or wardrobe or makeup or catering or set design or carpentry or lighting all those things are needed within uh, the creative industries and much much more because you have to think we are almost recreating another version of the world so to speak in tv and in film and as such you'd need all those jobs that are required in the ordinary world you know in the world we all live in within that industry if you are to recreate so um that moves us on to our create strand and we create purposeful pathways for young people to enter and thrive in the creative industries and you know i it very much enjoyed working at the bbc and it gave me fantastic grounding for the future you know, and I think back now, mum wanted me to be a journalist or I said you have a profession. And um, I just always had it in my head that whatever I did, I was going to make sure that I tried my very best at it. And I always think that if you're passionate about it, it, it doesn't really feel like work. But, you know, I had various different jobs when I left school. I was my first job. Actually, Jeremy Hunt, who was the ex-health secretary, gave me my first job because way back then he used to run a magazine um, or really a, um, a, a, like a directory called um, Hot Courses. And uh, I worked as an account, account executive and then a, a manager um, selling magazine space back then. But great great training ground it told me it taught me customer service it taught me how to speak to people it taught me how to present it taught me how to I guess storytell that was probably my first journey into storytelling because if you want someone to buy from you you have to be able to sell the product right and it's all a story trust me it's a story um so you know why we do what we do and how we help to change a conversation so there's a few images here and uh, as I said I worked within the creative industries worked myself up within the BBC to a group production manager and left there and went to Interfilm and became um, head of production director of content and I made all the content uh, along with my teams for uh, a YouTube channel called Get Into Film and you'll be hearing from uh, one of our previous young reporters that's joining us on the panel. I won't give anything away. So you get to watch all our presentations. Um, but that was a fantastic, fantastic uh, opportunity. And quite frankly, looking back at my, my life and my career, um, it's been great. Really hard work in the creative industries, but I met some fantastic people and had some fantastic opportunities. And how I kind of worked into this worked into this now was I was always doing um, mentoring I guess I always had young people in for work experience because I was very aware um, when I ever traveled outside of my working environment so outside of the TV um, industry and probably into a school or when I gave a talk somewhere young children that looked like me would just be hanging on to my every word and I knew that that was probably because there weren't many people like me that they saw be on TV or had come and speak to them about their experiences in the creative industries. So essentially, for want of a better word, I made my side hustle my real hustle. So I had to prepare for that. Obviously, I did, didn't just happen overnight, but it was a bit of a light bulb moment when I said, you know, um, it's time. And I think everyone in their life, particularly talking to any parents or teachers or anybody else um, older out there thinking about their career that they're currently in. You know, there is a time if you think back in your life about when you just say no and you just you have to make that change. And that definitely happened and was a turning point for me um, when I decided I actually wanted to leave what would seem as an illustrious great career, which it was for what it was. Um, but I 
found a calling elsewhere and I've never looked back since. So I've been running the Ascension Agency for going into our third year now. So time has really, really gone fast. Granted, you know, 18 months of which were probably spent in um, COVID times. But that wasn't such a bad thing because we always have to keep on our feet and we always have to adapt no matter what life throws at us. And why I do what I do and why we all do what we do is for those reveal moments to show there are people out there like me. There aren't huge amounts. We probably all know each other from one way or another. But, you know, you can have a great career in the career in, in the creative industries. Um, I certainly did. And I will never, ever regret that. So I'm trying to change the conversation because... If you look at this image here with all the um, all the electronics and the buttons, that's what you'd refer to as a gallery where people get to see what's usually happening in, on TV. And then that's where the people people sit who were talking in the ears of the presenters saying do this or count down or cut that question or stop talking about that or, you know, go to go to break now. That's where all those um, directions would come. But again, very few people looking like me uh, took up positions in those spaces, but they were there. They were there, but not enough. And the same, you know, I've got a picture here of going live and doing live um, broadcasts and just making sure that when we start, when we press that start button, it's something we really are believing in and it's something we really want to change that's why that picture is so important to me might not have that much relevance to you in there but that's why we want to change the conversation we want to show that there are people out there that have had and are starting and are living in fantastic careers within the creative industries um, and there's a space for everyone as long as you're passionate about what you do and just want to keep going make sure you align yourselves with positive good people with sound advice and anything you want to get into make sure you try and get an opportunity to watch or observe or immerse yourself in that there's so many things on youtube you can go and find so many things online um speak to your careers advisor at your school obviously come and ask me questions when you get an opportunity at the panel but essentially we want to be the change we want to see essentially, as the saying goes. So we put ourselves out there, we create these opportunities because we want to change that conversation. We want to ensure that young people, um, underrepresented groups have those opportunities to enter a field that may feel like it's close to them, but it's not. You keep pushing and anything worth having takes hard work, any career. Anything worth having takes hard work. And if it's a competitive environment you're going into or competitive industry, i.e. a lot of people are seeking roles in those spaces, then yes, you will have to work a bit harder. But um, I'm sure you realise that that is a case for quite a few things. And that's not such a bad thing because I think that helps with our resilience. But uh, yes, I can talk to you about that till the cows come home, quite frankly. Next slide. Why do I love what I do? I love what I do because I know it makes a difference. I'm doing something I'm really, really passionate about and I get to use and build on my skills and talents every day. So therefore, essentially, it does not feel like a job. You know, it's my life and I'm loving it. Um, don't get me wrong, though. Every day is presented with challenges, as my uh, little sign there shows. And one of the hardest things I have to encounter in the work, particularly when you're doing something you love, is it can be so hard to say no. Because I don't want to say no. I want to do everything. I want to help everyone. I want to get involved in every opportunity I can. But, you know, that isn't always possible. But what I ensure I do is if I cannot help, I'll suggest somebody else that I know would be really good at helping out or I signpost you to various different opportunities or places of interest or resources or I just make a date to come back to you at a time where I hope to be less busy but either way the point I'm making is I want to make sure that you get those opportunities if someone's in need I'm going to help and if I can't help personally I recommend you to somebody else who can and 
the same old thing, you know, there's never enough uh, time in the day. So it's very important to prioritise my tasks and delegate where I can. So um, that's all I can say when it comes to finding more time in the day. I don't delegate enough. I need to do more. Um, but yeah, nobody's perfect. It's a working progress. But the point I want to make to you all is I'm aware of my shortcomings. So I work extra hard to be you know to ensure I try and get as much time into the day and to ensure I can always help when I can so transferable skills now when I say transferable skills I'm talking about skills that you can take anywhere that are transferable across industries and across various different environments so even though I am um a managing director and a founder and I've had you know really good jobs and great experiences there are certain things that I think really help me out and help me to succeed and I think being aware of your skills and what I call sometimes some of my programs your superpowers is one of the best things you can do if you are aware of what you're good at or at least what people say you're good at, pay attention to and listen up to what people say as well. Um, if you hone your skills, there's the world's your oyster because you'll only keep building on those. But the point I'm trying to make is all of us have a superpower, even if it feels you can't find it. We all have one and that's what we have to pay attention to. And the quicker you find out what yours is, uh, the, 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 the easier a lot of other things will will um, transpire so one of the ways that you can probably try and find your superpower is to just spend some time thinking about times that you never think about time you know or think about the things that make you feel good or the things you can do really quickly that people say oh you've done that faster than most or what have you just be mindful of all these positive of the positive things and the ways that you create change and be aware of what people tend to come to you for and those are probably the things that you're probably known for but for me personally um motivation and perseverance has really been one of the things that have put me in good stead throughout my career from the very beginning to even today um, I'm always motivated and I always persevere. I never give up. Probably should have a one or two projects, but hey, ho, uh, that is my nature. So I'm going to work as hard at it as I possibly can. So what helps me with that is a positive mindset. A positive mindset is so important in everything I do, especially in my work. I have to believe I can do a good job if I want people to believe it too. I must be enthusiastic and willing to do the hard work, even when I'm tired. Like now, <laughs> I'm never not really that tired. I, you know, I'm a mother, I've got children, you know, I'm a wife and it's just continuous. And there's always something to do, but I wouldn't change it for the world. So um, as long as you're doing, and it helps when you're obviously doing something you love, right? And the other thing I'd say was another transferable skill of mine is problem solving. You know, um, I maintain a solution, a solution based focus when I'm presented with a problem. So logical or analytical, whatever the problem is, I always look at it like, how can I create change? How can I solve this problem as opposed to spending my time vexated about why this problem has even occurred wasted energy i don't have enough time in the day as it is lists deal with a solution and therefore i find there are so many ways to resolve issues when you have the right attitude so if you already go into something with a solution-based approach the likelihood is you'll find that solution that bit quicker and these two pictures here um, that is a picture of me um, running an award ceremony that we, we used to run at the um, Interfilm Film Awards, which we had red carpet and a lot of talent um, coming along to each March. And that was, I think, at the balcony on Les in Leicester Square. And I was holding, um, I was holding somebody's, I believe that is an Oscar. I was holding an Oscar. And I might reveal to you at the panel who that was uh, from and who was so kind enough to let me have it and uh, a rare a rare occasion not only for me holding um, 
an Oscar, but for the person who actually won it. So I'd love to tell you about that further down the line, but you'll have to come to the panel. And then there was uh, at the bottom, we've got a picture of me at a YouTube space in some downtime. And I used to go in there where I YouTube put on when anyone has um, 10,000 or more followers, you're able to go along and film. But we were there anyway, because we did a lot of work with them at Interfilm. And we were, we, we were doing, I do believe it was some filming behind the scenes footage that particular day. So Essentially, that's taken me to the end of the presentation. I hope you found it quite insightful and enables you to have some questions to ask me at the panel um, that's coming up on the 7th of July. But what I'd like to leave with you is um, a little bit of a quote by Maya Angelou, one of my most wonderful wonderful people in this whole wide world and even though she's passed she'd definitely be one of my imaginary dinner guests and it went something along the lines of people will never necessarily remember what you said and people will never necessarily remember what you did but people will always always remember the way you made them feel so I'm just going to leave that with you because it's not always about all that you do and all that you see and all that you have experienced, despite me talking about all this for the presentation. But it's also about how you make people feel. So I'm hoping I'm making you feel inspired. I'm hoping I'm making you feel inquisitive. I'm hoping I'm making you feel like you want to find out more. And I'm really hoping that you are excited about learning a bit more about entering the creative industries.